What's up, everyone? And this is Next Level Thinking. What's up, everyone? It's another episode of Next Level Thinking. It's your host, Chris Holmes, as always, as we bring you inspirational guests to help you take it to the next level because we can all be inspired. And today I have a lovely guest by the name of Margo Jordan. Awesome. So let's go ahead and hit the ground running. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. I see you got the smile going, good spirits, especially on the sun. That's always good to see so that the audience can know uh, a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So um, Margo Jordan is my name. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Enrichly. And um, Enrichly is a self-esteem based e-learning platform and gaming app for K through 12. We work with different schools and organizations in our sole focus. And um, what we do is we really want to make personal development accessible to kids everywhere and anywhere, and starting with uh, self-esteem improvement. Um, so that's a little bit about myself and my company. Awesome. And that's great to hear that you have a direct uh, contact with the educational system. And uh, even with that little bit of information, I can see how it can go. But let's dive in a little bit further. What actually made you catch that drive towards the kids and I know you said like self-esteem correct yes self-esteem yes yes Yes. and I believe especially with um during this time uh self-awareness mental health is definitely something very big impacting not only adults but kids as well and I want to know like what was your story to actually get you really involved into this yeah, so I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and as a kid, I, I had low self-esteem at times myself. This came as a result of my parents getting married and divorced a couple of different times to one another, um, and then my mother, she actually turned to drugs and alcohol to cope with that divorce, amongst a bunch of other things that um, she had been through. So I found myself as this kid in high school making some really bad decisions. Um, I was hanging with the wrong crowd, getting stuck into peer pressure, just doing things that were not leading me down the right path. And, you know, one day I just kind of decided, I don't want these decisions to define me and um, my, and determine what my trajectory would be. So I decided to join the military and it was in the military where I developed a sense of self-discipline, morals and values, and really all of the things that allow my self-esteem to flourish and really for me to realize my full potential. Um, I went on to graduate with my degree in uh, finance from Texas Southern University, graduated at the top of my class, went into investment banking, but I kind of, (laughs) I kind of quickly realized that, you know, that, that was just not for me. Um, I had this itch to really solve this problem that I had as a kid. And honestly, it was something that I still kind of suffered from as an adult, which is low self-esteem. Um, so I kind of just took a leap of faith and I decided to open up my own brick and mortar location. It was called Chicks with Class. And Chicks with Class was just self-esteem learning center for girls. So if you think of like a tutoring center, um, you know, we taught everything. It was non-academic based, but it was all revolving around self-esteem development. So we had after school programs, we had drop-in learnings. Um, we would teach girls all about like positive body image, self-esteem, how to have confidence. We would do public speaking classes. Um, and then we were approached by different schools and organizations to implement those same programs within their facilities. And it kind of dawned on me to, you know, offer this as something extra or or supplemental to the schools in addition to the academics that they the kids were already learning then when COVID happened we didn't renew our lease at our center because we were kind of like you know "Hmm." well we didn't know where the world was headed so you know we took that as an opportunity to just take the platform global and, and just do it digital this way we can impact kids everywhere, not just in Texas. And that's where Enrichly was born. And, you know, we retained a lot of our same clients from like the parents and the schools that we work with. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up getting a very large contract with the largest school district in Houston, actually, to pilot programs and their, their facilities. And, you know, I kind of just ta- changed the model a little bit to where we're not just focused on girls, but we're focused on boys and girls, and we're really making personal development accessible to children everywhere and making sure that 
kids have a healthy self-esteem and a, a positive self-image. And honestly, I always say that you teach best what you need the most, you know? And, you know, for, for me, I knew that was self-esteem. And why not start with kids while they're young, they're still impressionable and their brains are still in like this theta mode of, mm-hmm. of learning. Um, you know, so it kind of, it just kind of all fell together, you know? And um, now we've, we, we have contracts in like Dubai and um, we're working with Abu Dhabi, working with some school systems in China. Um, and it's just really been a great thing. And, I, and honestly, self-esteem is not just something that impacts girls or boys or black and brown kids. You know, it literally impacts anyone from anywhere. Um, you can have the richest parents in the world, but if you have low self-esteem, you can't just throw money at the problem. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about the story and, and kind of how we, how we got started. Awesome. You uh, provide a lot of details into that. And I was taking mental notes because you hit on a lot of different things that I feel like uh, follow throughout, even throughout adult life. Um, but one thing I want to direct this to is you mentioned um, in the beginning of like how you were watching your parents going through a divorce and things like that. Mm-hmm. So um, the way I'm going to phrase my question is, do you believe, and I'm asking this openly, that the parents, let's say, experience or a relationship mo- among the, each other can affect a child's um, perspective of life and also their self-esteem and why? Because I feel like this is something deeply rooted that uh, applies to everybody. And a lot of time I feel like we hear these things saying like, oh, just pray about it, throw it under the rug and you, you'll be okay. But it's never discussed. So I want to hear your answer to that. Yeah, of course. Um, great questions. So honestly, one of the core reasons that a child develops low self-esteem is either due to a traumatic childhood loss. So that could be their parents getting divorced, um, you know, parental substance abuse issues, parental neglect, um, and sometimes as a result of a teacher or someone that they're they're surrounded by a uh, majority of the day. So I definitely believe that that child's perception of how their parents are interacting impacts their self-esteem. Your, all you're associating your self-image with, you know, is an unhealthy relationship between your parents that pretty much will emulate itself within that child. Um, so that child might grow up thinking that they're unworthy of love or they're unworthy of having a healthy relationship because they didn't see that growing up. You know, and honestly, when it comes to your self image, if your self image is distorted and your self esteem is low, you're not reaching your full potential because you're only going as far as what you think of yourself. And I don't know why you got to say that again because that hits everybody. <laughs> because I can't tell you how many times you hear people either complaining or saying the most negative things about themselves. Yeah, I mean, you you're only going as far as what you think of yourself, and I always say thoughts become things. So if you think negatively about yourself, that transcends to you speaking negatively about yourself. And then it's like a revolving door and you're going to constantly say and think these negative things. And then you look at your life and it's full of negativity and things that you really don't want because that's what you're focusing your energy on. And that's what you're pretty much manifesting to yourself. Um, So, you know, when it comes to what we teach and how we teach it, we teach children how to have this healthy self-image regardless of your circumstances. And I'm glad to hear that because uh, definitely have someone make a step in another direction to impact the kid's life. But uh, also like tell us a little bit more of like some of the activities and things that you do into the schools uh, that may actually <laughs> give some ideas to the parents and actually anybody watching this video what they can do to have a more positive impact into the kid's life. Yeah. So when we go into schools or, um, you know, we, we might contract with a different organization, we have three different entry points. Uh, we do either an on-site curriculum. Um, we may just license it out for that school to use, or we'll do like a train the trainer. And with the on-site curriculum, 
this is one of our really effective ways of teaching because we go in with our curriculum. We have our software that we've developed, which is a gamified self-esteem platform where all we're teaching and, and developing is how to love and value yourself. And the kids do different activities during that on site. They log into Enrichly's platform. We're collecting this actionable data to measure their self-esteem. And then as we're measuring their self-esteem, they sort of go on through the program and they're learning through positive affirmation exercises or how to be disciplined. Like what does discipline look like? Discipline is heavily tied to your self-esteem. And then we also may focus on goal setting, but from a vantage point of your self-image being tied to the goals you think you can set. Um, and really helping to repair that self-image of that child or improve that self-image of that child so that they're thinking bigger than what they're actually thinking about themselves. Um, And then aside from that, we do a lot of really growth mindset exercises, but everything is from Vanda's point of your self-esteem and your self-image. Um, so we may teach kids about how to set healthy boundaries, um, you know, because it's also a part of improving your self-esteem, how to make sure you're physically active and physically fit, because that's also a part of having healthy self-esteem. What are you eating? So we're teaching them different recipes through like little cooking classes. Um, and then we also have etiquette classes, which is working Mm -hmm. on like this external, um, you know, social aspect and where the self-esteem development is like internal work. And then when we go into the social skills and etiquette classes, it's like external work because we want to be able to give kids the confidence that they need, where if they walk into a room um, and they're at a new school, maybe they can walk up to those students and introduce themselves and won't have a problem, you know? And so many adults even face that issue where Mm -hmm. they may go into a room, they have no idea who, who anyone is, but they don't even know how to be confident enough to introduce themselves. You see that a lot in networking events. Grown yeah. men and women all the time. Yeah. And it's like, you know, teaching you, teaching the kids how to properly shake someone's hand. Um, you know, don't obviously talk with food in your mouth. Um, the difference between dinner knives and a salad knife or a dessert fork and a, a main course fork, you know, uh, teaching them all of these things. I remember just recently we went into a school in third ward uh or no fifth ward Houston and we were teaching the kid some etiquette and they said um I I can never be like this fancy you know and and it was like a matter of really teaching them that just because you know these skills it doesn't mean that you you don't fit in like these are things that you are supposed to be learning you know and they're giving you confidence and a lot of them when they were looking at the silverware that was in front of them, and they had no idea I like what each one was. I said, how did that make you feel? And a lot of them said, you know, it made me feel unworthy. It made me feel dumb. It made me feel like, why am I here? You know, and a lot of our black and brown kids aren't exposed to things like that. And then they feel like, you know, they're not supposed to be in those rooms. Oh, we're going to definitely, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're not going to, we're going to actually <laughs> pause on this one because I think this one is very big. The fact that you were explaining how, like, you were, pres- let's say a person is presented, and this goes for everybody, especially kids, in a different scenario with more finer things um, than, like, let's say, their current household, just even nicer things that they feel in their thought process, I'm unworthy. Yeah. That's huge because you we have adults that think like that too. And it's heartbreaking yep. to hear kids thinking that because okay, as a kid, you're supposed to be a be dreaming the biggest you shouldn't be thinking about limitation but what i want to ask you is what can we do to make kids think i am worthy of this and get them out of that i guess pressure from i guess you can say from even at home of their current situation or friends to now thinking i can do this i mean that's a really great question and Honestly, we are trying to change the face of education to where we are focusing on that, that worthy piece first and then academics next, because 
you know, when you think about the fact that some kids are like failing out of school, they don't want to go to class, they're not motivated. You're like, okay, well, why? Why is that? And it's because of them not feeling like they're they're worthy. Like they're, why do I need to get good grades? Why do I need to do good in school? They have nothing to look forward to. And how we get them out of that is exposing them to the this personal development. And I asked my kids in the class the question of what do you think the difference between a successful person is and an unsuccessful person? And there was this one kid that answered that question so well. And he said, I think it's the mindset. And that is just the truth. It is the mindset. And I, I like to, a lot of, some people might not agree with this opinion um, and that's fine, but I look at it like before you taught African-Americans or black people how to read or before we learned how to read um, and, you know, like our, our slave masters were, they, they didn't want us to learn how to read. Right. But then when we learned that skill, what happened after that? Right. We were equipped with this knowledge that can take us so far just by teaching us how to read. So I look at self-esteem in that same way. And I really do feel like a lot of why our kids are not being taught that is because for some reason, well, I know the reason, but they want to keep our kids in this mindset. They don't want to expose them. If we, if we told kids You can literally be anything that you want and really taught them how to believe that, not just told them, but taught them how to believe it. How do you think our world would look 10 years from now, 15 years from now, by just giving them this piece of information of how to adjust your self-image, how to improve your self-image so that you actually, in your mind, you know that you're worthy and you can do literally any and everything, fail faster. We would be so far along. But a lot of what I see when it comes to this lost potential, which, by the way, translates to a massive social and economic burden that costs millions per year, you know, this lost potential, it trickles down to our our children, though our programs are for any and everyone, uh, because we can go to some well to do schools and they have that same notion of I'm not worthy. So there's no. Um, Yeah, there there is not. You know, and it's just, but what we can do is just really make this tool accessible to kids, um, teach them at an early age what it really means to be, to have a healthy mindset, to have a healthy self-esteem. Um, there's a book called Psycho-Cybernetics, and the author's name is Maxwell Malt. He talks heavily about just self-esteem and how that is literally the, the launching pad to anyone's success. He was a cosmetic surgeon, performed thousands of surgeries on people and really found that his patients were still unhappy with, with their results. And it wasn't because he was a bad surgeon. It was because they were unhappy with their self image from, from the beginning. So if you're unhappy with your self image, there's literally no way that anybody else can change it. This is something that you have to change on your own. Um, Teaching kids this but also teaching parents because parents, they don't know what they don't know, honestly. You know, we, we may have grown up with a lot of our parents leaving traumas with us, unbeknownst to them, but it's because of, of the behaviors that they learned. And then their, what did their parents learn? No one has ever really sat down and made this self-esteem development like a required class. And this is why we see this it's just it's an it's a never ending cycle of kids growing up thinking that they're unworthy because that's what their parents think and that's what their parents think and that's what their parents think. I will tell you right now, you're hitting a lot of things on the nail. You're actually <laughs> making my job a lot easier. Which <laughs> is perfect. Well, I'm glad because... to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna give you another alley you because I'm very I'm paying attention to all the details because you're providing a lot of great uh, valuable information that anybody can take home but is this when a child approaches uh, matter of fact i'm gonna phrase like this and i want you to answer when a child approaches a bully and the bully bullies the student is it a problem of the per the student who's getting bullied insecurities and self-esteem 
or is it the bullies self-esteem issues that's the bigger problem it's a really great question you have so many great <laughs> questions oh my gosh um it's both so children with low self-esteem actually their parents are faced with like their kids that are being bullied or they may be the bully because like i said when you have a healthy self-esteem you know how to set boundaries right kids that are being bullied they are putting themselves in some type of predicament where they're allowing themselves to i guess i don't i don't want to say they're allowing themselves to be the victim but they are not setting boundaries with that bully because if you notice bullies don't mess with everybody <laughs> they 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 do not they know who they can mm. get away with they know they they know how to get away with it and who they can get away with it from they know that because they sense these things they know oh well this person is just gonna let me take advantage of them because that person that kid is not setting boundaries maybe because they weren't taught and setting boundaries honestly stems from this lack of self-worth because maybe you want to be a people pleaser you don't want to set boundaries you know and maybe you're afraid of what other people are going to think about you because of what your, your self image is you're so relying on what other people's perception of you is when we need to teach our children you cannot tie your self-worth to other people's opinions of you because other people's opinions of you is literally none of our business like whatever they think that's on them now that bully 10 times out of 10 they are faced with issues where they're feeling unworthy. So they want to make someone else feel just as bad as they feel about themselves. So the behavior that you see them displaying towards other people, that's how they feel about themselves. You, you're not going to be a happy person, but you walk around wanting to be mean to someone, wanting to make other people feel bad. That's, that's not how that goes, you know? So when it comes to the child that is being bullied, they have issues with self-esteem themselves. And then that child that is being the bully, they also have issues with self-esteem. Um, and I, we teach this in our classes with our kids. And, you know, it, it's just something that uh, when we explain this to kids who, who may be in a situation and they're being bullied, we explain this to them how that person who's, who's doing those mean things to you, nine, 10 times out of 10, they feel bad about themselves, you know? And <laughs> what I used to, uh, is I tried to, I guess, befriend the, these bullies, these people who feel like they have to be mean. And when you get, when you really, really, really get down to the nitty gritty, you find that that person is so insecure and they feel so horrible about themselves. And you're like, oh, no wonder why you were doing that. You know, so um, it's, it's an issue of low self-esteem on both sides. Making my job easy. <laughs> and I'm a strong believer. This is my opinion. I feel like um, I'm glad you making this uh, efforts towards the kids when it comes to self-esteem, because I believe that is a direct connection to incarceration, uh, things that you see happening on the news and much more. It's the mental health, um, the things that are constantly thrown under the rug, the ignoring the other signs when kids are outlashing out of anger, behavior and much more because something that is going on internal and they're either not getting the attention. And I'm learning this as well. I mean, we all do um, that these things that go unheard of or unaddressed can engulf into something even bigger or even fail at times, which we don't want to see, of course. But a lot of times um, it starts with something just like this, a attacking and getting direct and going on what's inside of that child's mind and finding out why they're outlashing, including the bullies, because a lot of people yes. don't want to just take, most most commonly want to take sides and see what's going on with the victim. But it's also important to find out what's going on inside of the bully, on the bullier or the attacker, because you got to find out why are they going at this person and why. And, and both sides, it can be insecurities, how they feel about themselves, the self-esteem and all the things that you hit on, which is very concrete. And I'm glad that you provide all the information. Now, there's one other question that I want to bring up, and then we're going to wrap it up and kind of get your information. Now they can reach you and all that and much more. And it's this one. Matter of fact, we're going to end with this question. This is even better. 
the dangerous up. Why should we address and correct the victim mentality of a child in the early stage? That's a really good question. Um, so I always say that things don't happen to you. They happen for you. And when you correct this victim mentality in, in children, they're not growing up in a state of the world owes me of something like, and they're not growing up with this like sense of entitlement, I guess you can kind of say. Um, and then they're not going out into the world thinking that everything is happening to them. This is preventing them from understanding how, when you are not turning yourself into a victim and, and you really turn yourself into a victor, you don't turn your problems into something to where it's preventing you from reaching your opportunities. You turn your problems into something that is helping you to reach those opportunities. Um, it allows kids to fail faster. And by failing faster, it's also allowing them to learn what works and what doesn't work so that they can be successful. I think everybody in life, they really just want to be happy. Like, and that's just, that's the key. I know it sounds so cliche, but everybody wants to be happy in life. And if you walk around thinking that you're the victim and, oh, so-and-so did that to me or, or this person did that to me, you are creating this never ending cycle and these behaviors and these characteristics that become concrete and cemented into you where you're preventing your own self and we're preventing our own kids from really reaching their full potential and that's so damaging to the self-esteem of that individual if i turn every situation that i've been in into i was the victim woe is me i would not have made it this far at all because like i said thoughts become things right so if you're constantly thinking that you're the victim, constantly thinking that other people are doing things to you, you're giving them the power to control your life when we literally are the curators of our own destinies. So because we are the curators of our own destinies, by not giving other people the power, hence saying that we're the victim of, of any and everything, you know, um, this allows us to really take control. And that comes with the setting boundaries, forming healthy relationships, um, and really improving your self-esteem so that you can really reach your full potential. Um, and I'll just share like something personally with me. Um, about three and a half years ago, I, I separated from my spouse and my daughter was, I want to say about two months old. No, no, no. Two weeks old at the time. And I, I was literally kind of like abandoned. I, and I still had my my brick and mortar. Um, essentially had to shut it down because of COVID. And I still had these three little, little ones that I had to look after. But I never looked at my situation like I was a victim. Like, oh my gosh, my husband left me. He, you know, and I never did that. I never wanted to feel bad for myself. And I kid you not, to this day, people always ask me, well, how did you, how were you able to go to school, get your master's, start a whole new business, gross like over a million in revenue. Um, now you're backed by Google, IBM, Microsoft, all of these things. But your whole husband left you three and a half years ago with like just you and your kids and you just kind of came out of it seamlessly. And I say it's because I didn't look at myself like I was a victim. I looked at the situation like that happened for me and it didn't happen to me. You know, I don't take things personal. There's another book that, that, that listeners should um, read and it's called The Four Agreements. Um, and <laughs> one of the um, one of the agreements is, is don't take things personal. Because 10 times out of 10, a lot of what people do to us is not anything personal. This yes, book right here. That one right there. That is like, don't take it personal. You know, and if you're not taking it personal, then you're not victimizing. 
And when you're not victimizing, you're not looking at your situation like, woe is me. And you're not feeling bad for yourself and, and, and digging yourself deeper in this hole of, okay, I can't get out, you know? So, so important. And I, and I instill this in my kids. You are not the victim. Things happen for you that happen to you because when you get out into this real world, nobody is going to care about your story until you make something of yourself. So, and, and that's just the, the truth. Like nobody cares. And nobody's going to feel like pity for you. So I'm teaching them, don't feel sorry for yourself. Like, yeah, you can cry about it for a little bit, but then get off the pity pot. Now it's time to get to work. What do we need to do to turn the situation around and turn a mess into your message? So your mess won't be your legacy. So, yeah. Um, that's kind of what I feel about allowing our children to not perpetuate this victim mentality. And she drops the mic. Go ahead and tell us how they can find <laughs> you, contact information, all that and much more. Yeah, so um, I'm on Instagram. Um, my personal Instagram is just Margot P. Jordan dot and then it's it's an underscore but it's three times um i wish i can change my my instagram name but unfortunately my page was hacked like two months ago or three months ago and they changed my name and i have no idea how to change it back um and then my company's instagram is just at enrich e-n-r-i-c-h-l um dot or dot l-y so enrich dot lee E-N-R-I-C-H dot L-Y. Um, and then you can email me, uh, Margot B at youthenrichments.com. Um, and I'm on Twitter at uh, Margot Patrice, M-A-R-G-O-P-A-T-R-I-C. Though I never really use uh, Twitter. Um, and then I'm also on LinkedIn, Margot Jordan, which I use a lot. So, so yeah. Awesome, awesome job. Well done. And thank you again for hopping on the show, providing all this great information, especially for the kids and adults, because I know <laughs> that adults will be listening to this and be like, I know this is going to the kids, but I'm taking mental notes myself. But, you know, that's how it's supposed to go because we're all students in life and learning up something information. Again, it's your host, Chris Holmes, providing you with great guests. As always, I'm here with my guest by the name of Margo Jordan. And it's Chris Holmes. And just like Margo just said, and Jordan, I have failed over and over again. And that is why I succeed. Peace. <laughs>